This is a real estate school training webinar. We are going to be talking about how to make the perfect offer today. That's what we're going to be talking about. And I have some slides for you all that I think will help explain this. Uh, without further ado, let's jump on in. All right. So again, making the perfect offer. Guys, in order for us to make the perfect offer, we are essentially going to be using what's referred to as the MAO formula. And the MAO formula stands for the maximum allowable offer that we are going to be able to make when we're talking to a seller. And the reason that we are going to essentially use this formula is because in order to make the perfect offer, we need to use a calculation that gives us the max that we can be allowed to pay. Now, even though that we're going to basically be using this formula and determining what the max that we can be allowed to pay is, doesn't mean that we are actually going to offer the max that we are going to allow ourselves to pay. We're even going to discount that a little more. We're going to talk about that in this training webinar, why we do so, okay? So let's jump back in and actually get through some of these slides so it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, first and foremost, I love this slide. Why does anyone care? And the reason is, is number one, we want to work on the numbers, not on our feelings or emotions, right? We want to remove the emotions out of, out of making offers. So out of the process, guys, this should not be an emotional thing. We want to essentially work on the numbers. Keep that in mind. Number two, we also want to reduce our risk in the deal. And number three, we want to project I'm sorry, we want to project our expected profit margins on the project or on the flip in advance, okay? So that's why you should care. So what is the MAO formula? Well, the MAO formula stands for maximum allowable offer. And we get that by using this formula, which equals ARV times discount rate minus repairs. So we're going to essentially solve for the MAO, everything on the left side of the equal sign. The ARV stands for the after repair value. And we're going to get that by running comps. You can use you know, free sites like Zillow or Redfin. I personally prefer to use um, the local MLS. If you don't have access to the local MLS, you can get access to most MLSs with websites like Batch Leads and PropStream. Those are going to be a little bit better. Best is MLS. Next best is PropStream and Batch Leads. I prefer Batch over PropStream, but they're both good. And then next best would be the free websites, okay? Then we're going to multiply those comps, that after repair value by a discount rate, okay? Typically speaking, that discount rate is going to be 70%, but we're going to get into that in a minute, why it doesn't always have to be 70%, but it can and can be and usually will be. I'd say, you know, roughly 70% of the time, it's going to be 70%, but there's definitely some times where you're going to want to vary, you know, off of that. Sometimes you're going to want to um, make it a little more. Sometimes you're going to make it a little less, but regardless, we're going to get into that. And then you're going to subtract out the repairs and the repairs are going to be the cost to get to the ARV. So keep in mind that, you know, one person might have a higher ARV than the next, and that's okay because their repairs that they are, you know, going to be using to get to that number are going to vary. So the cost to get to the ARV is really what we're referring to when we're talking about the repairs, because somebody might have 10,000 in repairs, which is going to give them one ARV on that same exact property. Another investor might have $30,000 in repairs, which is going to get them to a different after repair value. Keep it simple. It doesn't have to be complicated here today, folks. If you are wholesaling it, you are essentially going to change this formula and you're going to add a wholesale fee to it. So just add or minus, I should say, subtract 5, 10, 15,000 to your formula, which is ultimately going to get you a lower max allowable offer in the end. Keep it simple. Don't overthink it. All right. Why do we use the discount rate that we talked about up here in this previous slide? Why do we take an ARV and multiply it by a discount rate? And the reason is, is because you have to factor in your holding cost, utilities, insurance, taxes, cost to borrow your money, plus your cost to sell, which might be your agent fees, closing costs, seller concessions, 
so on and so forth. All of these costs to do the deal is typically going to be about 10%. Now, this might not even include all of your borrowing costs, but it's typically going to, at a minimum, cover your agent fees, your closing costs, and your seller concessions. So depending on if you're using your own money or your borrowing money, it could actually be a little higher than 10%. But typically speaking, from the hip, it's going to be roughly 10% to sell a property. That's going to be the cost to do the deal and to sell the property in the end. Now, if you have additional interest and borrowing costs, that could be even more. But for the most part, we like to just use a simple number of 10% that's going to come off the top. Once we buy it, fix it up and sell it, that's going to come off of that selling price, right? Before we can really determine what the profit's going to be. So then finally, we're going to add in our expected profit. So the next slide is the, the expected profit. So for example, what is the discount rate? Well, let's say we use the discount rate of 0.7 or 70%. Well, what's going to happen is, is we're going to take our property or our ARV and we're going to multiply it by 0.7. This essentially takes 30% off the top. Of that 30%, 10% is going to be your cost to sell. 20% is going to be your profit margin. So the difference you know, of the cost to sell is the profit margin. Now, if it's a competitive market and you're in a B... B plus, maybe even A class neighborhood, you might have to be a little bit more aggressive. Therefore, you might have to have a discount rate of let's say 0.75 instead of 0.7. Essentially, what you're doing is you're taking less off the top. Now you're going to be taking 25% off the top. In this scenario, your cost to sell remains fixed at 10%. It's typically going to be 10% cost to sell once you buy a house and fix it up and you go listen on the MLS. You know, maybe you get away with seven, eight, nine percent, round it up, be safe. I'm telling you folks, it's always best to just use a 10% cost to sell. If it costs you less, that's icing on the cake for you. But don't try to think, oh, I can get away with four or five percent because if you spend more, it's coming out of your profit. The difference of the 25 in this scenario minus the 10 is a 15% profit margin. So as you increase your discount rate, that means less money is going to come off the top. Therefore, less profits are going to end up in your pocket. So let's run through a different, a couple of different scenarios. Keep in, mind, keep in mind that the discount rate, folks, is a sliding scale. So if we use a discount rate of 0.5 or 50%, that's 10% off the top. And then we're going to have a 40% profit margin. We would use a 50% discount rate in a, a D, D minus, maybe an F class neighborhood. Neighborhoods where we don't really want to be. We're going to really, really, really discount our offer big time because we're going to have much more risk in those neighborhoods. So we're going to want to see a 40% profit margin. You could even do a 0.6 or 60%. Now, if we're in the best of the best neighborhoods, B plus, A minus, maybe even a solid A, we might need to be at an 80% discount rate. Therefore, we're going to multiply our discount at 0.8, which means we're only going to have a 20% coming off the top. Well, in that case, 10% comes off as your cost to sell and your profit margin is only going to be 10%. So a good way to understand the discount rate and the sliding scale is basically you're going to do this based on the neighborhood. Look at it like, you know, back in grade school or, you know, school in general. Look at this as, you know, A, B, C, D, F. These are your classes of neighborhoods. Your A class neighborhood is 75 to 80%, maybe even higher if you're a solid A or an A plus, you're going to need to have a higher discount rate. Reason is, it's less risky in those nicer neighborhoods. And the, and the reason it's less risky is you're going to have lower crime and you're going to have better schools, period. Okay. You're also going to have higher competition in those neighborhoods and you're not going to be able to win deals at just a 70% discount rate. You're going to need to get a little bit more aggressive. B class, 70 to 75. C class, 70%. Now here's the thing. 70% of your neighborhoods are going to typically be average, right? So they're going to be 70%. So you can literally use... 0.7 or 70%, it's the same thing, 70% of the time, because most neighborhoods are going to be average C class. There's going to be some that are going to be above average, that's your B's and your A's. There's going to be some that are below average, that's your D's and your F's. As you work your way down, you're going to want to have a less of a discount rate, which means you're essentially going to be leaving more you know, discounting the property even more, but leaving more profit in the deal for you. So D class could be 60, 60 to 70%, you know, depending on if it's D minus or D plus, 
And then F class, this should be a C, not B. F class, not class. <laughs> um, you're going to be at 50% because the risk is high. Schools suck in those neighborhoods. Crime is high, okay? So discount the hell out of those deals when you're using your formula, which we're going to get back to in a second. So you have more profit, all right? There is more risk in those neighborhoods. Therefore, you are going to need more reward. And also, generally speaking, there's going to be less investors and less competition in those worse or lesser, you know, parts of town. Now, again, if wholesaling, you're going to need to subtract the wholesale fee. So keep in mind, if you have to, if you're going to be wholesaling, you have to be buying great deals, folks, excellent deals. All right. And you're going to need to sell those deals good. So keep in mind that you may have a, um, you know, a great deal on a property here, and you're going to essentially going to need to sell that deal at a good deal here. All right. And you're going to be making, well, I should flip it. Great deal. Sell it at a good deal. You're going to make that spread. So a lot of newbies, they make this mistake. They think they can go in and they can get a property under contract that is barely a deal, or, you know, maybe it's a good deal, but it's not a great deal. Well, if you're not buying great deals, there's not going to be enough spread for you to tack on a wholesale fee, an assignment fee, have room to go do a double close, right? These are just different ways we can wholesale a property. So keep that in mind, okay? If you're wholesaling it, you have to buy great deals and you have to sell them at good deals. You're essentially going to make the spread in the middle. So let's go through an example of the MAO formula. Let's explain it. So we have an example deal here. We have a property that has a $160,000 after repair value. However, this property is going to need $35,000 in repairs. So let's go ahead and solve this MAO formula based on these numbers. We're going to get that ARV by running comps. We're going to determine those repairs by either asking the seller or ideally going out and walking the property and determining those repairs in person in real time. So MAO equals ARV times discount rate minus repairs. So that's what we're going to do. The MAO is going to be 160 based on our, I'm sorry, the ARV is going to be 160 based upon this, this example, okay? We're going to say this is in a normal C-class neighborhood, which 70% of the time, that's where it's going to land. So we're going to multiply it by 0.7, and then we're going to subtract out 35,000. That's the repair cost. So let's solve for that. 160 times 0.7 puts us down to 112 minus um, the 35K is going to essentially get us an MAO of 77,000. That's what our MAO is. So we've essentially just used the MAO formula to solve for the MAO. But guys and girls, keep in mind, we are not going to offer the 77,000. Don't forget, this is not the offer that you want to make. The reason is, is because we are solving for maximum allowable offer. It's it's basically allowing us to solve for the maximum that we are going to allow ourselves to be able to offer. And if the most you are going to be willing to offer, in this case, is 77000 you don't want to lead with 77000 because it's the most you can offer. It doesn't leave you any wiggle room at all to be able to get in there and negotiate. So again, don't forget, this number that we're solving for is the most that we are going to be able to offer. So it's your job to go even lower. Two main reasons here, folks. Two main reasons, okay? Number one, in the event that they don't like that number and they want to negotiate and you've essentially given them the best number you can give, you don't have any wiggle room at that point to negotiate off of. You have no wiggle room. So you need to make sure that you build in, excuse me, that you build in wiggle room. The second reason that you don't want to, and I think I even have a slide for this, let me double check, is because what if they say yes? Let's jump ahead, exactly, right here. MAO formula explained. Why don't we want to offer the maximum allowable offer? Why do we wanna go lower? Well, number one, we want that wiggle room to be able to negotiate with our sellers. Very, very important. And number two, sometimes they will actually accept an offer lower than what we are willing to pay. When I say willing, I mean the most that we're willing to pay. So if we go back to this scenario and we have an MAO of 77K, but I go in and I say, hey, you know, based upon the area and the numbers and the deal and, you know, the repairs that are needed and the market and the interest rates and just all the stuff, right? 
you know, I'd be really, you know, I, I would be really interested to buy this home somewhere around 65,000. All right. Well, if they say, Dave, you know, we would do it for 70, but I'm willing to pay them 77. Well, I just made an extra $7,000 by not offering the most I can be willing to pay. All right. In another scenario, let's say that I do the same thing. I have an MAO of 77, but I offer them 65 and they say, Dave, 65 is great. Let's do the deal. Well, if I would have offered them 77, then they would have said, Dave, 77 is great. Let's do the deal. But I came in lower. So you want to build in that wiggle room, but you also know that sometimes they're going to be willing to sell less than what you're allowing yourself the amount that you can pay. So the max allowable offer is essentially the most that you should be willing to pay. And you should always make sure that you discount that number. So you build in the wiggle room, number one, like we have here, but also know that sometimes they will accept an offer lower. So like I was saying before, if my MAO was 77, that's what I calculated, 160 ARV, it needs 35 in repairs, 160 times 0.7 minus 35 essentially equals 77. This formula is so simple, folks, all right? We're going to discount that, and we're going to come in and we're going to offer 65, maybe even 70, or even give them a range. You know, we're, we're probably going to be pretty interested in buying your home, sir or ma'am, around 65 to 70,000. But I know in my head that I can essentially pay up to 77, but I'm building in that wiggle room. If they like that 65 or 70K number, send them an offer. Very, very important. The next step would be send them an offer. If they don't like that number, then say, okay, you know, that's where I'm comfortable. Where are you at? Where are you at in this, you know, in this um, approach? Or in, 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 you know, in this process, in this negotiation, you know, I'm really comfortable at 65 to 70. And maybe they come back and they say, yeah, well, we're, we're thinking closer to 90. Well, now, guess what? You have the ability to come up to 77. So it's your job to negotiate with them and essentially try to meet them in the middle. And my definition of middle isn't the middle middle. It's just somewhere in between. So if you come in at 65 and they're at 90, you can essentially try to get them somewhere around 75 to 77,000 which is your MAO, again, assuming we're using the numbers in this example here to help you get to um, making an offer that makes sense. Now, again, in the beginning here, we talked about why. So let's kind of review, all right? We talked about why because we want to make sure, where's the slide I'm looking for, that we build in our expected profit margin. So 10% is going to need to come off the top, no matter what. And then we're going to need to have an expected profit margin, right? So if we look at the MAO formula, where's the slide I'm looking for? Uh, here it is. It's actually up at the top, isn't it? Right here. All right. We need to make sure that we start with the comps, the ARV. And that's where we always are going to start. Next, we're going to multiply by the discount rate, and then we're going to subtract out the repairs. So again, this is how we get the perfect offer. But once we solve for it, folks, don't forget, this is the most we can pay. This is a mistake I see super, super, super often. All right, people are making this mistake. They will solve for their MAO, all right? MAO, 77,000, but they're not offering less. You always want to pad the MAO. The MAO is the most you can pay. And in this case, 0.7, 10% is going to be your cost to sell. 20% is your expected profit margin. So if you go above your MAO, you're not necessarily going to be able to save or decrease the amount it's going to cost you to sell that deal. That's going to be pretty fixed at 10%. What you are essentially doing is you're, you're basically reducing the expected profit margins. So never go above your MAO. Never, ever, ever. Even whenever you're doing your negotiating, that's the that's the ceiling, folks. That's the highest you can go in at. You should pad and discount your MAO every single time. Again, let's recap though. Why does anybody care, right? Well, this is a very important slide. We want to remove the emotions. We want to remove the feelings from making offers, all right? We want to make offers based on the numbers. This is simple math. We're not just going to go in and get all excited and offer to pay more. We're going to lose money or not make the expected profits that we want to make on our deals when we do that. Therefore, making the perfect offer comes down to using this formula, period. All right, number two, we want to reduce our risk in the deal. If we can't, if we can't project, which is number three, 
our expected profit margins, and we're guessing, we're speculating, that's not um, that's not a great approach, right? We're basically not going to be able to pad our, our risk or at least have a good idea of how much risk we're taking, okay? So we want to make sure that we are using this MAO formula so we are making the perfect offer, we're not taking on a ton of risk, and essentially we are... Um, working on the numbers and we're not necessarily just making a speculation. That is not a good idea. Folks, we offer a coaching and mentorship program and we are more than happy to work with you, okay? We can teach you how to make 200 to 300K your first year in real estate without wasting years learning, taking big risks or using any of your own money. I would love to have you all apply. Apply to work with me. Okay, I'm going to put a link in the um, school group along with this call replay where you can come, you can learn a little bit more about what our program looks like. It is a coaching program. It is a mentorship program. Now, we have a mastermind, you get that included, but you're not just joining a mastermind, you are actually going to be getting hands-on coaching from me and my partner, Mike, and we would love to work with you. Okay, spots are limited. And if you are looking for a coach or a mentor, apply and we would love to work with you. Keep it simple. Doesn't have to be complicated. All right, guys, have a great day. And I look forward to seeing you all apply and having you all join the coaching and the mentorship program. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.